didn't have pierced ears. <laughs> and my earrings would go flying off, you know, when I, when I put the music on. So they'd keep doing it over and over, and then they had to restage it a little bit. I wasted a lot of time on my ears. <laughs> No, unfortunately, I've never really been the soap opera type, supposedly. I think Charmaine was so funny. She was like a, a, a sitcom, a, a primetime sitcom type character. So I really wouldn't have fit in that well with most soap operas. We used to have so much fun 
lived together. After we had done these shows, we hung out. We were just, you know, we, we were together on the road for years. So I thought, I'm going to make him really cool. You know, he grew his hair and put a ponytail in it. It had the one ear, the one earring. And so he even put out a Christmas card of him having his ear pierced and it said, this was my get ear. <laughs> He, he really got a lot of mileage from that. <laughs> the other thing she wants me to do, she wants me to get, you know that little character? Uh, oh, the smiley the, face. The, the smiley. The yellow smiley the, face. She wants me to put it on my thumb so I go. <laughs> Friendship, man. Huh? I don't know how long it's going to last. <laughs> In the beginning, when you're saying you are uh, sober, it's sort of it was like a chant, like a religious chant. I was wondering how you developed that. If that was something from the director from my sermon. The Is that for me. Yeah. <laughs> my hair, professional hair and grade, for about time I wanted to say. It's sort of the singing of the obsolete line. Yeah. Did you sing it? The obsolete man. Did you sing the obsolete? Yeah, I'm, I'm the one that took over the, uh, the country. You are obsolete, obsolete. You are not, yeah. Did you make that up? The, no, the, no, that. They told you to do it that way? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they told them, they told them to do it that way. It's like take over the whole country, you know, which, which we were, That was a great, great, great episode then. Yeah. Man, poor little Christian. Chris Weaver taking a beating at the end, you know, better him than me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Any more more? In the back. Uh, Mr. Elick, your role in uh, One Flew of the Cookies Nest, that was mainly consistent of saying, I'm so tired, is, is that correct, or were you a different character? Yeah, that was his character. All right. I just want to say that I can't count the number of Monday mornings where that character is flashed through my head as I stand <laughs> uh, Could you tell me, when you when you look at the script and it just says, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, did you did you give great thought to how that would, uh, how you would read that line? And did you read the book to compare how your character was similar or not similar to the character in the book? Mm. Do you want to answer that for me? <laughs> Did you read the book first? No, no. We auditioned with Robert De Niro, was, uh, and they asked me, like, you know, who would you know, be patient and read your reaction to certain things, and I would just. Through the eyes, just vacant, vacant, just nothing there. <laughs> Milo Swarm was very kind to me at the end of the movie. He was very, very, he was very kind to me. He said some nice things about me to me. He said I was his favorite actor in the whole movie. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, I actually I have a I have a jacket uh, that I got from the commercial. And Mickey Spillane and I were working walking down Hollywood Boulevard one night. He tells this old well, he's not around now, but he tells that story. He says all these guys kept looking at her. She's walking down the street with her, you know, her pink dress and her red jacket. And he said, I turned around and she went by me and she says, Tastes great on the back. So he, <laughs> we got a lot of a lot of use out of that jacket. <laughs> and I refused to change my team because, you know, I was much more important that it tastes good because you're not gonna care if it's less filling if it doesn't taste good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, and Mickey was like, uh, we were like a couple in all the commercials. We had, a, we had a great time. He was a really nice, nice man. Reminded me of Superman because he was like, it's he, justice in the American way. And he's, you know, kind of tough, but real sweet. Great guy. I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Is our hour almost up? It was 18 years in those commercials. <laughs> yeah. You were asking? Oh, just to ask, how was the dirt bike today? <laughs> <laughs> no. A lot of that. The, the turn pipe. How was the turn pipe? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I don't think we were even looking, were we? Matt was so entertaining. <laughs> So I hope he stayed on the road. <laughs> it's like, hey! hey. <laughs> Any more hands? Mm -hmm. I just want to say, in response to the gentleman that brought up who was that, you know, one part of the Cougar Fest is women who won multiple Academy Awards. And we can all remember the top ten actors in that film. But your portrayal of that character, when I walked in this room, I went, that's the guy from Cougar Fest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is acting. That is acting that is on the level of everyone else in that film. Because I remember you. I remember Nicholson, I remember everybody else too. But I remember your character. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.